Welcome to RGB TV, filmed in London's only retro video game store. We've got hundreds of games, stacks of consoles, everything you need to be as happy as Leisure Suit Larry. We don't just sell video games, we play them too. We offer a range of items in store to keep your retro gaming experience as unique and awesome as possible. So why the need for RGB TV? Well, I tell you, we think it's kind of criminal to keep all of this in this store just for the people of Stratton. With the power of the internet, we can connect with people worldwide. We'll be chatting, reviewing and playing retro video games. I'll also be bringing you some tips and tricks to get the most out of your retro hardware. And last but not least, we'll be getting you involved as much as possible to help us make something truly unique. So, allow us to introduce ourselves. Player One, meet Joe. Master founder of the retro game base, part-time gardener, and full-time beard owner. Player two, Tom, co-owner of the shop, not Joe's beard. He likes late nights, loud noises, and lots of tea. Player three, me, Nat. I like cute things, monkeys, and power tools. With thousands and thousands of games in existence, it's difficult to know which ones are good, bad, and just plain ugly. Shinobi X for the Sega Saturn. What do you think of that one, Joe? Ah, Shinobi X. One of the more revered titles to come out on the Sega Saturn, and it's easy to see why. The side-scrolling style plays perfectly to the Saturn's graphical strength. The cutscenes are indeed poorly acted, but they provide some light relief from the serious business of murdering hundreds of fellow ninjas in a satisfyingly bloodthirsty way. You can control your character with subtlety, and there are a satisfying number of ways to dispatch the many adversaries who pop up. Indeed, with no time limit and respawning enemies, one could run back and forth across level one, spilling blood indefinitely. But like a finger, pointing away to the moon. You will want to see what more this game has to offer, and the moon is exactly what you will face at the end of level one. He's fairly easy to defeat, and level 2 sees a change of pace, with a lovely looking upwards level. From level 3 onwards, however, things get weirder, and harder. The third stage sees you taking on some winged demons reminiscent of G from House of the Dead, several clones of Bennett from Commando, and a poorly rendered phallic snake thing before facing the king of the demons. The challenge continues on a well-paced difficulty curve, with a total of 9 levels, and provides a good challenge without tears of frustration. All in all, despite its high asking price of around £40, Shinobi X is well worth tracking down. Does this look familiar? A black screen when you're trying to start up your cartridge? Well, the problem may well be that your contacts on your cartridge are in fact dirty. You'd think just blowing in the cartridge would solve your problems, but unfortunately that's not going to work in the long run. So we'll move on to some things you can find around the house to get the cartridge nice and clean, starting off with a cotton wool bud. Just a dry cotton wool bud. Quite vigorously rub it along both sides of the connections on your cartridge. Try it again in your machine. If that fails to work, you can move on to the pencil eraser. You can cut just a slit in the end of it so that it fits over both sides of the connection simultaneously. Again, give it a vigorous rub. Give it another shot, see if that works. Moving on from that, you can step it up a bit Get yourself some IPA solvent or some contact cleaner from the likes of Maplin or online. You can spray that onto your cotton wool bud, you don't need that much of it. Again, rub it along both sides of the connections. That should almost certainly get you back up and running. So last resort, if all the other things have failed, is to get yourself one of these, a nail file. Probably best to speak to your missus or your mum to get one of them. Very lightly rub it along both the contacts on either side of the cartridge. That can help to get a really stubborn cartridge back up and running. It is a last resort though, so only if you're going to throw it in the bin otherwise. <laughs> Retro gaming, it's easy to focus just on the big hitters like the SNES and your Mega Drive. But here at RGB, we've got so much more. And Nat remembers her first, Commodore. In the mid 80s, my dad bought a home computer, quite unexpectedly and presumably much to the annoyance of my mum, like the time he bought a boat. Anyway, the Commodore Plus 4 lasted longer in our family than the boat and their marriage. With the computer came a bundle of cassette games, each had the same design of a white and rainbow cover but with a different name emblazoned across it. So we had Treasure Island, Icicle Works, Exorcist, 
and my personal favourite, Fire Ant. Now I'll be honest, this isn't going to be an impartial review. This game was my childhood. Perplexing yet simple, it required tactics, dexterity and a little bit of luck. You play the role of the lone soldier ant whose mission is to rescue his queen against a bunch of marauding scorpions. Despite being comparatively anatomically gargantuan, you can't defeat the scorpions simply by sitting on them. In fact, you can't kill the scorpions at all, you just have to outwit them. Navigating the fixed screen from top to bottom, you collect a series of items to open doors and passageways. With five lives, it is possible to complete the eight levels, of course, without cheating. Once you know the order to pick up items and the best routes to outrun the scorpions, it's possible to race through the levels fairly speedily. Handy due to the fact that once you die, you're dead. No option to carry on or, as far as I'm aware, gain extra lives. Revisiting this game, I've played it on my Mac through an emulator and most recently online through a couple of different sites using the keyboard direction keys. However, this is a bit fiddly and gave me quite an acute bout of RSI at two in the morning. So, give me an original system with a joystick and I'll show you some scorpion evading brilliance. So on a cold winter's evening, we like nothing more than to sit around the computer and play a few games. Uh, let's kick it off for the pilot episode with Teenage Mutant Hero Turtles on the NES. This came out in 1989. Do you remember it? I don't, to be honest, no. <laughs> <laughs> Honesty is always the best policy here, Tom, I say. All right, let's get reacquainted. Initial thoughts, guys. It looks quite pretty, considering it's an 8-bit machine, but it's almost like they've gone to too much detail and it looks a little bit washed out. For its time, it's certainly a solid game, but I just don't really care enough about my character. What do you mean? You don't care about Donatello, Michelangelo, Leonardo well, and Raphael? Because I know if I survive, I'm just going to have to face yet another sewer that looks <laughs> exactly like the last what sewer. What I do like, though, is you can change your character at any point, and that's quite good. Level one is this one with the sewer, and you make your way through, and you have to save April O'Neil, the glamorous ginger reporter. In level two, you go underwater. It's actually a different style of gameplay and you actually need a bit more technique. So that one for me had the most amount of skill. And level three, you think is going to be really different again, but literally goes back to this kind of gameplay. Can I just say, Raphael is the worst character to have ever. His weapons are like spoons. Okay, level two. Go on then. All right, actually, that's done. Sum it up, I'd say I like the sounds. Uh, I like the gameplay in terms of the top down versus the side scrolling action, but overall, I could live without it. I would say it's in that sort of solid second level of games. It's a, a sort of good average game. I'd say it's pretty messy in terms of navigation, but the bonus is that you get to eat pizza to make you feel better, and that can only be a good thing. We want to know what you thought of our pilot episode and what you'd like to see in our next. Is there a particular game you want us to feature? Maybe a console that deserves some RGB respect? Or an event coming up that you'd like us to film at? If you want more reviews, less reviews, more tips, guest players and reviewers, just let us know. Or maybe you yourself would like to get involved. In fact, we're looking to hear from gamers, video makers, music makers and animators who would like to be part of the RGB TV team. To get in touch, just email the address on screen and please feel free to share and comment on our pilot video.